What's up, everybody? Reggie, the Front Row Report. I am joined tonight by Christoph from the band Bile. Dude, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me tonight. It is very exciting to have you on the phone with me right now. My pleasure. Man, you have... First off, we got the new album out, which is exciting. Um, let's talk about it. Um, great piece of work, man. Great bio sound. Um, absolutely in love with it. I actually checked it out tonight for the first time, to be completely honest. Love it. Cool. I like to hear that. Yes. Um, yeah, so let's, t let's talk about that. Let's talk about making the record. Um, what did you guys have? What did you have on your mind when you went to go make it? Because to me, it's got a lot of that, you know, classic bio sound, great industrial metal. Um, what did you guys have in mind? Exactly that. I uh, I was back. I was back in that frame of mind. Uh, the last record I did, Hate Radio, wasn't. I wasn't in the right frame of mind. Like I had been. I was like sober for a few years, hmm. and uh, that didn't really work well. <laughs> okay. Being sober, oh, I just didn't like it. You know, I was no real reason I needed to be sober. I was like, oh, I want to see what it's like to be sober, and uh, and then finally I was like, okay, I don't like being sober. <laughs> so, uh, and then I don't know. I just really felt like I wanted to recapture the old classic vile sound. And yeah, I, I, I purposely, I, I've had songs laying around for years that have never, never, either never finished or just demoed, never really transformed into, you know, a solid piece of work. So I, I took that time to go through all these tapes that I had laying around, you know, even like cassette tapes. Or I didn't even have a cassette player. I had to go buy a cassette player to listen to all this shit. And, uh, and I, I think I just chose certain parts of, of things that I really liked and uh, sort of updated them with, with other newer stuff. And uh, I did not want to go into the direction that a lot of other bands have been doing to get like a modern sound and adding dubstep elements and whatever else is popular these days, you know. This is what I'm good at the industrial metal and the bile sound and I, I just wanted to concentrate on that. I wanted to be that. And so it was a conscious effort to sound like the old sound. Okay. Because that is me. That is me, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't do like it, it, sometimes in the older records just to sort of find where where I'm, my niche I was experimenting a lot. And uh even though I did a lot of experimenting with sound on this record, which is just what I love to do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I kept it real solid, and a lot of the songs are real simple, and it just flowed out of me so simple and easy, and I'm, I'm really happy with the outcome. Awesome. Not to mention the album title is just epic. I mean, built to fuck, born to kill. I mean, Vile has never strayed away from, you know, outstanding, very vivid imagery with the song titles, you know, and, and album titles. Um, and this record is just, like, you know, like you said, no exception to anything. Um, album titles, song titles, especially lyrical content, is very vivid and has great imagery to it. Um, it's almost like you can close your eyes and picture the lyrics coming to life. Um, you know, um, so where, where do you draw a lot of your inspiration for, for this, you know, for the lyrical content of the music? Because it's very, a lot of it's very graphic, a lot of it's very, like I said, vivid. That's what's in my head. Okay. This is what I think of going through everyday life. You know, I, I mean, most people I meet, I wouldn't mind killing because I don't feel they deserve to <laughs> because they're usually assholes in the end. Uh, I, think I, I have very, very few, like, true friends, I feel. 
I think and everybody most else is feel that way too. I an think, acquaintance, if you will. Yeah, and I think most people feel that way when they meet a lot of people or they encounter encounter a lot of people. I, I think it's, I think a lot of people have those thoughts and a lot of people think that, but I think a lot of people are, are maybe afraid to say it and afraid to come out with it. You know, um, I think that you're just, you know, you're just saying what a lot of people are just afraid to say, you know, and afraid to touch on sometimes. Well, I don't censor my music, so it's, you know, marketable. Mm-hmm. But, you know, to me, it's, this is my art. I'm not, if, if I was looking to sell records, lots of records, and like, you know, play a role, mm-hmm. I would be doing different kind of music. Right. That's not, this is just, this is who I am. You know, I, I'm a fucking asshole a lot of people and I'm sad because then I don't have to brood about things myself hmm. okay fair enough um, and you mentioned that um, you know in the past you've experimented a lot with the music uh, on this record you experimented a little bit and you know I, I think every artist no matter what they're doing you know it's good to experiment it's good to try new things um, how do you, but in a lot of ways there's a fine line um, there's too much experimentation, and I think too much really takes away from the final product and make it too different um, to the point that it's not even the same. The same, you know, what the same what the artist would normally, you know, create. How do you find that fine line, or how do you disc- you know, how do you determine, you know, this is just too much experimentation. This is not going to come out the way it should. Um, that moment usually finds me it's like a moment of clarity when you when because when you're immersed in in making this art that whoever whoever you are that makes you're so it's hard to detach yourself and actually look at it like a third party would you know Mm -hmm. so it's really and every once in a while i have that like uh, i'll put something down for a couple days uh, and I won't even think about it. And then I'll go back and listen to it. And there's that moment of clarity, like, all right, well, that's a little too much. Or that's not enough. But I do get those those moments, and I'm really happy that, that those even happen. But sometimes they, they just simply don't happen. <laughs> and then I, I'll listen to an album that I did, and I'll listen to a song on the a- album that I did a couple years ago or something. And I'm like, ooh. I don't like that. <laughs> it's very rare that it's happened because I just accept it. Mm. Everything as it comes to me, you know. Okay. I mean, the, the, the one way that uh, that my sound becomes different from almost every other band you might hear is my recording process, which is it's. I, I just go for the end result, you know, I don't do things, you know, I've talked to other producers and they're like, how did you make that sound? You use what? <laughs> like, you're not supposed to do that. And that to me is like, such a closed minded thing to say, like, you're not supposed to do that. It's like, well, why? Why am I not supposed to do that? Well, that's not how you're supposed to record. Well, who cares how you're supposed to record as long as you get a sound that you really like. That, mm-hmm. that, you know, I have to be pleased with it. Well, that's what makes and it. I, exactly, and that's what I've always done. I've always, like, when, you know, I have to have an end result with the equipment that I have. And, you know, if I don't have a, a full drum, drum kit in front of me or something like that, and a drummer to play, because I, I suck on the drums, that's why I... I I want to kiss the guy who invented the drum machine. But, yeah, I have to use what I have. And, and you know, I'm not a, a wealthy man that has a full studio. You know, I sometimes they take care of people with me here. Sometimes I, you know, I'll just like sort of quote unquote borrow gear from people. <laughs> but it, it, it's all about the end result with me. It's not about how it's done, so, so it starts to make things things a little bit weird. So when you're when you're sitting down when you're when you're writing, 
you know, when you're writing the music, do you know exactly what it, obviously everybody knows, you know, what they want it to sound like. Um, with this record, did it turn out the way you envisioned it going in? Because um, sometimes that'll change. I really, I just let these songs organically happen. Mm. I didn't really have a game plan. I didn't have like a, a track sheet. I didn't have anything. You know, I just started fucking around with shit. And whatever happened, happened. I mean, and a lot of the things that you hear were like, I would just be recording and I'd make a mistake. But some weird noise would happen. And I love happy mistakes because sometimes it turn into the like a just a hook in a song. So there's lots of stuff in the vibe that was a mistake or the gear fucked up that I just happened to be recording at the time. And so I'm like, wow, that sounds cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that, you know, or or make it even louder and emphasize the mistake. And that's part that people remember about the song, not even realizing it was a mistake. You know, so a lot of these riffs I started out with one idea and then before I knew it, I was on to something else. Nice. You, you guys, I mean, it, it turned out great. I mean, like you said, a lot of it's like a lucky mistakes. I mean, it turned out, you know, outstanding. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, that it, like you said, there was a lot of time in between the last record and this one. Um, I think, what, four, four or five years in between records this time around, I think? Um, do you think that maybe... I think 2009 yeah. was the last was Hate Radio. Yeah. Um, do you think that, you know, looking ahead, do you think that maybe, you know, you might take, you know, a little bit longer, a little bit less time, you know, in between records this time around? Or, you know, maybe just take it as it comes and when the inspiration hits. I'm, uh, I'm already working on the new record. Nice. Nice. I want to. Yeah, I want to put out a record a year, even if I don't tour for the record. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had taken some time off from Bile at about 2005, and then I mean, I had made that record, Hate Radio. Mm-hmm. That was all like music I had been working on, and some of it is just you know demos that I made sound good because a lot of times. I don't just demo a song, you know, I just, I record as I write, mm-hmm. so, you know, I have everything just set up, so it just becomes a song, Okay. you know, I mean, in essence, you could, you could say that every Bile album is a fucking demo, mm-hmm. you know, because it's just me writing while everything is, is hooked up, but I am trying to, I'm going to try to put out an album a year. Okay. And more, and more if I can, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, now with the digital download page, you can put out a single, mm-hmm. you know, on iTunes, yeah. which I think is really cool. You know, it just mm-hmm. it costs nothing to really get out there. I mean, a lot of people still want the physical copies, but so far we haven't made any physical copies of Built to Fuck, Point to Kill. Mm-hmm. You know, and now that we're, we're doing starting to do like a much more touring and playing shows you know we're going to make physical copies eventually Mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem like people really need them anymore which kind of sucks Mm -hmm. because you don't have that artwork to look at yeah while while you listen to yeah exactly we got we have we have somebody building a website just now and uh when you when you download the album somewhere you know we want to make it to you, you can view all the artwork on a on a page or pages or even even animated stuff that's like gonna go yeah, for coincide like that. coincide okay. with the music cool and I mean and who says you have to tour on every album I mean music was made to be art to be put out for people to enjoy and if you can tour on it great if you just make music and put it out that's still art. That's still creativity, and you're still doing. You know, you're still an artist. So, I mean, who says you have to tour on every album for two or three years straight? I mean, I know, I know people really love live shows, and you know, yeah. some of the greatest experiences in my life have been seeing all of my favorite bands live. You know, mm-hmm. but you know, a live show is is 
one night mm-hmm. and it's only see, seen by you know a certain amount of people right whereas like you know you could go download my first record film 20 years ago and and enjoy it and get into it I, I mean I get emails from people all the time they're just like wow I just discovered you and then I went back and listened to your catalog and like holy shit I didn't even know you guys were around and now I have a new favorite band and this is exactly what I've been looking for and that's cool because nobody could go back and re-see a live show mm-hmm. so I've always had that you know that that idea in my head about it's more important to me to, to make the albums yeah exactly make the songs make the, make the music and yeah I mean uh I'm not like a, a huge fan of touring anyway. I mean, when I was younger, it was great because I could get, get to just go and party in every fucking city and, you know, mm-hmm. and the girls and the drugs and the booze and that was all great. But mm-hmm. now that I'm a little bit older, it's not the first thing that I'm looking for, you know. Yeah, and it's a little bit harder, you know, to party. It, it, it's harder on you, it's harder on your body, and sometimes it's just harder to recover, you know, as you start to get older from the partying. Absolutely. Day, you know, I mean, Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, it, it takes years off of your career at some point, I would think, you know. Um, yeah, that, that is that's a big reason why I did take, uh, you know, a few years off from vile because I just wanted, I was like, I'm getting a little too deep. Here, right. so I just said I, I, I'm just gonna stop everything and and uh, yeah, I started working in television and film. Nice. And yeah, it was really fun for a while. But my true love is doing music. Is that why the first leg of this, you know, this tour, even though you haven't been on the road for a while, is that why the first leg of this tour is a little bit shorter leg, not like a a big two or three month run? It's you know an eight day run. It was it was supposed to be a full North American tour. That was the plan, but um, there were. It seemed like there were so many bands going out at the same time that it just. I didn't want to get lost. That makes in, sense. In within like you know like mm-hmm. like Camp DM, Godflesh, Depeche Mode, Nine Inch Nails, and a slew of other bands. That, that people, you know, I, I I realize people have only a certain amount of money they can spend, you know, especially in this economy and the fucking job market sucks. Yeah. So it's like nobody's got expendable money, so mm-hmm. that's why bands tour less in the winter, so we're doing the second leg of the tour in the winter. Hmm. Uh, we, we, I figured, you know, I live in right outside New York City. Hmm. So it gets really cold in the winter. So I said to the booking agent, hey, as soon as it gets cold up here, I want to go down south where it's warm. Smart move. So that's, yeah. <laughs> so that was for uh, selfish personal reasons. <laughs> Nothing wrong so with we're booking, that. <laughs> booking the second leg to be all down south in like end of November into December. You know, like start on the East Coast, go all the way out to LA and then all the way back. Nice. You know, through the dates. Nice. And then come, then come the spring, you know, we'll do the third leg of the tour, and that'll be all the north half of the country and Canada. Okay. But, you know, we, we were going to just move the entire tour to that, but we were really interested in playing this uh, Cold Waves 2 festival in Chicago on, uh, September. on uh, September, September 28th. 28th. 28th that's uh because for us that's like you know those are old 90s industrial bands and nice. m- most of those bands are all friends of ours and it, it's going to be like a big reunion there's like like prong is playing the evil mothers screw 16 volt eight department revolting cox nitzarev wow. uh Accu crack uh, and, and a couple others uh, I can't even think of offhand, but you know these are people that we've been on tour with for years. You know mm-hmm. that we toured with back in the '90s. You know when 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 the scene wasn't you know as well known as it is today. It 
seems that like it's it, you know it's a lot more popular these days. Mm -hmm. But it's also the scene and the music feels a lot more watered down. Yeah. With, you know, so to get all these bands into one two day festival in Chicago is just like like we have to be there. You know, mm -hmm. we, we can't not play. This is, it's like going to be a reunion for us. Right. Exactly. I mean. So so in so in order instead of just driving out to Chicago. We played one show, we decided, hey, let's do a week, week's worth of dates right around that area so we can make some money. You know, because the festival shows don't pay really well. Uh, you know, it's at, it, it's at a big club mm -hmm. theater in Chicago. It's not at like a, it's not like a Lollapalooza thing. Okay. So it's like, you know, it's a, it's a small type festival. Right, but I mean the lineup is outstanding. I mean, how? Can, I mean, even if you're not playing, how can you not want to just go and see yeah. that lineup? If you're if you're a fan of, of that type of music, it's like I would. If I wasn't playing, I would fly in mm -hmm. just to see all my friends and see all the bands that I grew up loving. That and there's no there's no real bands that make that kind of music anymore these days. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, man. Like, it's like the early, early part of industrial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the same, you know, the same bands are sticking around and continuing to make music. Um, yeah, a lot of them are, are reforming. Like the Clay people mm -hmm. are just are reforming to do the show. And I think that since they're reforming to do the show, I think mm -hmm. I mean, from what I understand, that they decided to start continuing making music, which is great. I, I love them. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, it's their last. Yeah. Better year, but I've heard this is our last album a few times from them. Yeah, yeah, it just keeps. Oh. It's like they just keep coming back. It's like, you know, which is cool to see. I mean, longevity. They're like they're, they're like herpes. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, <laughs> but in a good way. But yeah, good way. The, the good kind of herpes. Yeah, if there is a, if there is such a thing. <laughs> It, it would be it would be ministry, and Al. <laughs> yeah, I mean we uh, we invited and flew uh, their guitarist Sin out to New York to uh, we did a file show in New York City at a theater and uh, so the encore we invited a, and flew in a few of our friends and Sin from Ministry came in and we played some uh, some classic ministry with him uh, with Vile and uh, some classic Nine Inch Nails and shit like that. Oh, nice. Really cool, really cool guy. You know, I didn't really, didn't really know him very well. We had met a couple times over the years, like when he was in Society One. But, you know, we, we just randomly called him like, hey, you want to come to New York and play a show or fly in? It's a ministry. He's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> nice. but it, it was a lot of fun. We had like Curse Mackey from Big Face and Evil Mothers come in. AC Slade, who used to be in Dope and the Murder Dolls. Now he actually plays bass for Joan Jett. Huh. It's really cool. It's good to play with it. Nice. So, this, so the, the second and third legs of the tour, as they, as they happen, I know that the rabbit hole is on the first leg. Are, are we bringing them out for the second and third legs, or is there going to be a different lineup, uh, different bill, or uh, is that maybe uh, going to be extended? Um, I think as it, as it lies now, it, it's them going to be with us both legs, all three legs of the tour. Very nice. You know, this, uh, I, I've never met any of them. You know, I've, I've never seen the band. Uh, I do like their music. They're more of like a like alternative rock hmm. with a little bit of industrial kind of thing. They're not like a, like an EBM band or anything like that. You know, it's an actual live band. It's not like two dudes standing there with a computer. Right. So it kind of gets it, that gets a little boring. It does. Uh, I like I like watching people at least play something. You yeah. know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, I like their music, and I talked to them on the phone. They seem like really, really cool people. Nice. So, you know, as, as the plan is now is that they're going to be with us all three legs, you know, 
uh, you know, they, they're a new band, so I remember when I was a new band, and, you know, I, I would have loved for somebody to say, hey, we want to take you on tour, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's fucking hard, man. We, we paid our dues tenfold because we were like this, we weren't just a band, we were, we were a fucking spectacle. We had like 11 guys in the band at one time. Right. So it was like, it was like a show. So a, a lot of these bands didn't want to take us out on tour in the beginning. They were like, I'm not taking out a band that like virtually could be more impressive than our band. You know, I remember, the, oh, like, I remember Ma Marilyn Manson saying that. I remember my Monster Magnet saying that. And, and a ton of bands that were happening in the 90s. You know, White Zombie. We're like, we're not taking you guys out, you know? We know your music. You guys are fucking brutal and you got a fucking sick show. We're not taking you guys out, you know? And we went out on tour with Guar. And Guar was like, yeah, no problem. We'll take them out. I just saw them the other fucking. night. <laughs> oh, Guar, the Guar fucking rules. I yes. love them. I love the guys in the band. I love Dave Brocky. But we were on tour with them in 1995. We were supposed to do three months with them. And then after almost a month of touring, uh, Dave Brocky sat me down. He goes, listen, we, we got to kick you off the tour. And I said, what do you mean? It's going great. Everybody's loving it. It's like, yeah, but you guys are really making us work. <laughs> and we don't like that. We usually get fans that, you know, don't have a show or anything to come on tour with us. So we don't have to work so hard. You guys are really making us fucking work and we don't like it. <laughs> and I was like, dude, no, we're having such a great time. He's like, I know we, we all love you guys, but you know, this is just a business decision. So we right. they kicked us off the other two months of the tour, which sucked for us because we, we we didn't have a big following. They you know, they were playing to a thousand people a night, right? And we kind of got shafted because you know it's like thank you for the compliment, but please, can we just stay with you guys on tour? And he's like, no, we can't do it, dude. Right. I, I I understand that. You know, I know where he's coming from. Right, it's like, it makes you feel good because it's like all of these bands recognize how good you guys are, but you can't get a break because you can't get that chance, you can't get that shot because they're all afraid that you're going to upstage them so early, you know? Right. So. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's sweet and sour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so do you... I, I can hardly hear you right now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, do you get? Uh, so, did you get to personally choose the rabbit hole to, to come out on the road, or were they chosen? For, how does how does that work? I'm not familiar with how you know the headliner and the opener come together on a tour like this. Uh, excuse me. I just I'm drinking a beer while I drive. Nice. Nice. No, I, I guess not nice. You don't have to tell your uh, audience that. Um, no, actually, I, I didn't know anything about the rabbit hole until we started working with this brand new agent, and he, he uh, we were going to go out on tour with another band, I can't remember the name of the band right now, and uh, since since we shortened the tour, because the original tour was supposed to be Vile and on Ash, hmm. who came FDM, because uh, I had toured with him in, in Pete Face, <laughs> and uh, we became good friends. So, uh, we decided to do a tour with Bile and On Ash. And uh, the tour kind of got, I don't know, since it was shortened, he didn't want to come over from Berlin mm. to do the tour. Because, you know, if he's going to come over from, you know, what, mm -hmm. six, seven, eight, not worth the ticket from Berlin to the United States. So, that. And then when we said, hey, we still want to do dates to go to the Cold Blaze Festival, he's like, well, I have this band from Canada called The Rabbit Hole. Why don't you check them out on YouTube? And uh, they would love to tour with you guys. And uh, they, the thing that they're bringing to the table that made sense is they have a, they're like five people in the band, but they have a 15 seat passenger van with a trailer. Hmm. So they said, hey, we'll drive you guys around and you let us go on tour with you. That works out. And I was like, that's great, you know. We that's money saved for us on uh, renting a vehicle, and uh, it's always better to you know travel together because 
the money is saving gas is mm -hmm. astronomical. Right. So, uh, so basically, you know, we're going to go out with them on this tour, and hopefully we could get along getting thrown in a van with a bunch of Canadians. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. Well, you know, I, I, we're, we're pretty easy to, to work with. And, you know, we give people, we always give people the benefit of the doubt. Right. Right. I you know, know. We, we, don't, we don't pull rock star shit on people. That's good. You know, because we're real down to earth, and we, we know what it's like. It's like, we're not, I'm not, like, a, a huge band. You know, we, we know where we stand in the world. We're an underground band. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we haven't had even had a website for years because we want to be an underground band, you know? We, right. Yeah, it'd be great to make money, but, you know, at this point in our career, it's obviously not going to pick up to like that fiance status right so so it's like we totally understand everything and if we can help out somebody else like we would have loved to been helped out mm -hmm. years ago you know that makes us happy right and you remember what it's like to be on tour with a with a big band for the first time you know you want to be treated well you want to be treated right and you want a good experience you know you don't want your first experience to be with a bunch of assholes you know yeah oh yeah Especially coming from Wait. another country, it's Canada, but still another country. You know, you you want a good experience. You know? Yeah, yeah. So we're hoping for the best, and you know, hopefully everything goes.